All right, let's talk about Xavier Howard, a very fascinating player who has at times been a elite corner in this league, but maybe not so consistently. If you look at his pro football focus grades year in and year out, he's now had seven years in the league, and he's only had one year above an 80 grade. That was a very good grade, 87.3. Also does have a 77.3 grade in there, and another above 70 grade in there, but then some, some rough ones as well. He's been an inconsistent player. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that the 2019 season, well, yes, the grade was low, only 322 snaps. I wouldn't take too much into account there. So really, uh, if you look at his past four years where he's gotten at least 800 snaps, he's been very good in three of them and only had the one down year, which was last year. Personally, when I watch a lot of the tape, that's also what I uh, I saw. I saw that he was mostly very good, but kind of a, a step back last year. But as I was watching more tape, I really do think that he could potentially have a massive bounce back year in 2023 in a Vic Vangio scheme. And let me explain why, and to explain why, we gotta watch some film. So first, let's start off with some of the stuff he does well. And I'm only gonna show tape from this most previous season, because I wanna be very clear in that I think he still is the same player. The player I saw last year was still the same player I've seen in years prior. I think sometimes the situation was different, but for now, let's just talk about what he does well. So it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. This is actually, you know, they're selling as though it's cover zero. It's not gonna be exactly that. That way, but for the most part, this is you know one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups across the board, and you know for a quarterback, you have to be prepared to get rid of the football quickly in this situation. So that's what Lamar is going to do: get rid of the football quickly. And Howard knows that. Howard is prepared for a potential quick throw. And watch what happens. Look right off the bat, you see how well Howard reads this, and. Well, you could potentially say this is a risky play to move in. If this is a double move, you could get burned for a touchdown, and that's true. But what's worth noting as well is the quarterback, Lamar on this play, is going to want to get rid of the football quickly because he doesn't know that it's not actually an all-out blitz. And for all he knows, there's an unrushed uh, blitzer who's about to hit him in two seconds, not even two seconds, in one second. So because of that, you have to get rid of the football now. The throw is made. Howard drops that one. A rare drop. He's usually pretty good at, you know, uh, when he has a chance to get the ball, he gets the ball. That could have been a pick six, but these are the kind of things that he does really well. He's great around the ball for the most part, and that's kind of what you like to see about Howard and part of why I think that he could, you know, he still is a very good player. Like something like this is another example. This is him working one-on-one -on, -one on digs. And just, I'm, I'm just going to show you to play. Watch how well it works out for Howard. I mean, look, as you see, Howard gives up just no separation this entire time. Completely shuts down digs. And after the scramble drill, when the ball finally just goes there in desperation, he's able to reach up and knock the ball away. The reality is when he is in a sort of a tight space like that, he does great work. So... What went wrong then? If these were all great plays by Howard, why did he have some issues as well? Well, to be honest, it was a lot of stuff like this, where it was kind of him having too much space. The reality is, the less space any corner has, the better they're going to be. But there's some corners who are different. There's some corners who are kind of known for being the guy who, if someone tries to run by them, they're going to be fine. Howard, not known for being the fastest corner, and while usually it doesn't affect him, sometimes it does, like in this scenario. Again, the situation is a pure one-on-one -on -one matchup right here, but watch what happens. So as you see right when this play begins, you see that, you know, the receiver who he was covering kind of faked as though he was going to the uh, left side of the field for him, which is towards the top of the screen for us, but is instead going towards the bottom of the screen. Howard, a little bit frozen there. And because of that, he doesn't have the speed to get back and ends up giving up a completion. That's kind of the main area that you see some of these corners have some fluctuation with, right? Someone like Xavier Howard, who can be just dominant in certain areas. In other areas, not so much. In other areas, there are weaknesses. Everyone has their strengths and their weaknesses. And if you play to someone's weakness, they're going to look weaker. That's what I saw from Howard last season, in my opinion. So why do I think Howard could be a really good fit? in the Vic Fangio scheme? Well, because he's not going to have those types of situations that he had in Miami of being sort of left out on an island that we've seen him, you know, have these past couple of years, which, listen, 
you can still make that work. I should mention that. You can still have a very good Xavier Howard season where he's constantly getting left one-on-one. -on -one. You don't need safety help, but you do have to be a bit peculiar in who you put him up against and making sure he doesn't go up against these speedy receivers and making sure that he's in favorable matchups to where he can not just do well, but thrive and be the elite player we've seen him be. I think Vic Fangio will, A, know that and know how to utilize him properly because he's you know one of the best defensive coordinators uh, the game has ever seen, uh, but also we're not going to see him have these one-on-one -on -one matchups too frequently. One of the things that Howard is amazing at is his ball skills, and the fact that he's gotten so many interceptions over the course of his career, despite the fact that he's been like primarily a man coverage corner, is just insane. I think that's something that doesn't, doesn't really get talked about a lot. Usually, the guys who get interceptions play a lot of zone, right? Like the Richard Sherman thing, uh, you know, he's uh, cover three corner where he can kind of run in, he sees the field at all times, so when he the ball is in his area, he can come in and make the play. Howard hasn't really had that luxury and now that he does have that luxury I could see him having a bounce back season in a big way and be an elite player again in 2023 because we haven't seen that really I, I think it's fair to say again corners is always difficult I think a lot of fans uh, don't necessarily evaluate their favorite corner very well or just a corner under team very well in general, which makes sense, right? Because when you watch the game, the broadcast footage, usually you only see the first few seconds, uh, you know, first second and a half or so of the play. A lot of times, you know, the route sort of starts two and a half seconds or really I would say about two to two and a half seconds into the play is when uh, you know if the cor corner is winning or not, which when you watch broadcast, you just don't often see that. So because of that, I think that, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to evaluate unless you really get in and watch the film or use some tools like a PFF grade, which I think can be good. But I do think that sometimes those things can be misleading as well. And you really have to look at the uh, little small things, look at how he's utilized and look at everything, understanding the entire context of, uh, you know, how he's been used so far in the NFL. And I think when you look at that, you can see that he's actually maybe a lot better uh, I mean, not better than people realize because people realize he's good, but I think that the concerns are less concerning might be the better way to phrase it. At least that's kind of how I view it and how I view him as a player. So yeah, uh, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think about Xavier Howard? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.